Hey what's going on everyone? So today we're painting a rifle and the rifle we have here to paint is the Ruger American. It has the flat dark earth Magpul hunter stock on it right now and a few other accessories but we're going to go ahead and camera this whole thing up and we're going to talk about how I do it and what my preference is. Cool thing about painting a rifle is you have endless options. So many things you can do. Uh, for the paint I'm going to use the rust oleum camouflage. We have the sand color, the dark green, and then the earth brown. There's also a few other colors you can use. Pick the colors you want, the environment you're in, the environment you're gonna use it in, whatever you want. I know Krylon also makes some, and then there's these spray paint style kits, some Duracoat, and tons of other companies. I just use Rust-Oleum because it's available, it's simple, and it works for me. Some of the templates I'm gonna to use to get some texture and design are going to be right here. We're going to use some mesh. This is from an old laundry bag. And then here is some mesh fabric that I got from, I do believe is Joanne Fabric or Hobby Lobby. And then another style of net mesh. And then actually some old fish netting. And then there's tons of things you can use. You can buy custom stencils, you can use natural vegetation, you can take like an old shirt or something and cut it up, whatever you want. Like I said, it's endless possibilities. Something else you can use is you can use a rag and rub the paint on, a sponge and dab it on, whatever you want for the effects. So the first thing I'm gonna do is after I know the weapon's good to go to handle, I'm gonna clean it and dry it down of all the oils and grime. I wanna start with a nice surface. So what I use for that would be just regular cleaning patches, a cut up t-shirt or shop towels whatever you want to use to clean your weapon you don't want any oils or residues on there because that'll uh, hinder how the paint adheres so you're going to want to wipe it down nice and dry if you want to get into extensive prepping such as sanding or priming you can do that but i don't do that i've never wasted the time for it after you have your weapon all dry and how you want it next step is going to be to tape off the surfaces you don't want paint on you know, I usually use electrical tape. You can use uh, gaffer's tape, duct tape, whatever you want. Just some tapes leave more residue and it's harder to get off. You can use painter's tape. I like electrical tape. I use it on my turrets for my adjustments on the scope so I can see it. And then for the muzzle brake, since this one is equipped for an ASR, it's an ASR brake, it's equipped with threads for suppressing. I'm gonna go ahead and tape off those threads because I want everything to line up nicely on there. And what I actually use for threads is some of this uh, plumber's tape. This is like what you'd use for a shower head when you're installing to keep it from leaking. That I can actually fit tightly over these grooves and rings. You're gonna wanna think about your optics. So I have scope caps on, they're nice and tight. That'll be good enough for me, but you may wanna tape them off if you're doing that. Uh, other things to consider, if you have a weapon light on your weapon, if you have anything that has certain numbers for adjustments, maybe potentially screw holes, maybe your action, if that's something you're concerned about. Myself, I'm not gonna tape that area off. I wanna paint it all. The one thing I will do is I leave the weapon on safe, get that area painted that way when I put it on fire, whenever I'm out there, the fire will still be unexposed. Just easier to identify. Uh, other considerations is your action. You may be worried about getting paint down in there. You may be worried about getting it up into your trigger group. And you may be worried about getting it down your barrel. Those are all things you have to consider. What type of fire armor are you doing this on? What are your considerations and use for this? For this rifle myself, I'm gonna spray it all. I don't care if paint gets down in here. The moving areas, it'll eventually wear off. I'm not gonna go super heavy down in here. However, it'll be fine for me. Those are decisions you gotta make on yourself though. Also consider all sides. What do you want painted? How far up the mags do you want painted? Because if you leave a mag inserted, well, it'll leave a cut line. You know, if you only paint with the bolt down like this, well, now the underside may not have it. Those are all things you gotta consider what you want. So I'm gonna get this barrel taped up up there. I'm gonna get it wiped down and then we're gonna go outside. All right, so here we are outside. We got the rifle taped up the way I want it. Like I said, remember to keep the things that you don't want painted in mind. So I got those threads, I got the scope adjustments. If you're worried about the barrel getting paint down in it, like I mentioned, another trick you can do is a rubber foam style earplug. Those fit down in there perfectly. Just remember to pull it out when you're done. So at this point, it's up to you what you wanna paint. I'm going to use the dark forest green for my base. So I'm gonna coat the whole rifle in this and let it dry. You can also see I adjusted up the bipod that way I can get the legs down there painted. Keep in mind, do what you want. So let's go ahead and get the first coats on this. All 
All right, we're gonna give that a few minutes to kind of dry a little bit. Another thing to note, however thick you put it on or however many layers you put on, totally up to you. I've done probably about 12 rifles now of paint and I found doing multiple light layers seems to be the best thing to get it to stay for longevity, especially your first coat. And remember, get up under there at all those weird angles to get things such as your scope rings, the bipod, all those angles. So we're gonna go ahead and let this dry for a little bit and then we're gonna move on to the next coat. All right, so we gave that a little time. We gave it a second coat there of the base green. We're gonna continue letting it dry a little more. Also keep in mind another tip, humidity. Right now it's a real humid day out. Not super ideal for painting, but I'm working with what I got. It's at least warm today. So we're gonna let that cure a little bit, see if there's any more areas that need green for the base. And then we're gonna move on to our brown colors. All right, I gave that a few minutes to dry up a little bit here. So now I'm gonna go onto the brown color. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna use some of the natural vegetation. You can see the tall grass behind me. I'm gonna rip a handful of that out and hold it upright on the rifle. What I'm doing is layering the paint. So I started with the green. Now I'll take the grass and hold it over and I'll go over it lightly with the brown. And then when I move the grass, the remaining lines will be the green. So that would simulate the grass. Keep in mind a couple things. If you're trying to make it to blend into your environment with your pattern, two things to consider other than the obvious of checking out the environment you're going to be using it in. Two big things to consider. Nothing really natural in nature is pure black and nothing is really completely straight. So you want to have a little bit of texture, a little bit of different directions. Consider those things. Again, you can use so many different methods, but we're going to go on and get some grass effect. So I have the grass effects that I want. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry for a few more moments. Then I'm gonna do a little bit more camo with the tan. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the sand collar. I wanna correct what I said a moment ago. I said tan, but I actually have the sand collar. So for this one, I'm gonna use my laundry bag net to kind of give it a little bit of like a rockish dry dirt look. We're gonna go ahead and texture of that in some spots as well. So now I want to get a little bit more brown in there. I want a little bit more dark brown in some spots. So what I'm going to do is literally just spray some streaks of it on there. All right, and the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over it with the green, just lightly creating a cloud of dust of the paint fumes to allow it to adhere to it. What that'll do is give a little bit more green back to it and it'll help dull down those highlighted colors now it'll kind of dull it down a little so it's not so aggressive all right that's how i do it now i'm gonna let this thing cure for a little while and we're gonna get it back inside here we have it back inside the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and peel off all that tape we put on to cover things we're gonna inspect it to make sure there's nothing that's gonna mess up the cycle operations Obviously be smart. Remember to check your barrel and everything before you fire. You want to consider safety. Other than that, I'm going to let it cure overnight. And that's pretty much it for it. Cool things to keep in mind about spray paint. If you mess it up or you don't like it, add more. Paint it again. No reason to tear it all down. Don't worry about re-prepping the surface. Just repaint over it. That's the cool thing about spray paint. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Please drop a comment down below of what you thought, what you'd like to see done next. If you have any questions, Consider subscribing and sharing the post. Hit that notification bell and give me a like if you don't mind. We're a small channel trying to grow here. I greatly appreciate your guys' feedback. And I uh, hope you all have a great weekend.